it's Emily West. I'm here with the Four Horsemen, Jim Preziosi, Eric Treadaway, and Corn Boy. Well, uh, first question, there's only three of you guys. Where's the fourth? Uh, yeah. I mean, everybody else, everybody else who works for us are the uh, the fourth horsemen and all the fans that uh, buy our stuff are all are the fourth, fourth horsemen. All right. And since you answered that, Corn Boy, we have to ask the name, Corn Boy. Where does that come uh, it's a long story, but I'm originally from Indiana. I moved out to the East Coast, and uh, there was a friend out here who, you know, asked if we had cattle in Indiana. I said, not really. We have mostly corn. And he said, oh, so you're not a cowboy, you're a corn boy. That's the, uh, the Reader's and Digest stuck. version of it. And it's stuck. It's well, stuck. you guys have worked on just, uh, you're internationally known. Uh, DC Universe, Masters of the Universe. You've worked on Harry Potter toy lines. Now, how did you guys all get together? Well, the three of us were working together at McFarland Toys, um, and we got to a point where we said, you know what, we want to do something more um, up our alley, something that's a little bit more toyetic, something that we actually have control over, and we wanted to start doing our own lines and stuff, so we figured, you know, we worked really well together. So we decided to leave the company and leave as a group and start our own company. And as soon as we did, um, we spoke to some people at Mattel and they were looking for a design group to actually come in and revamp some of their lines like Masters of the Universe and work with them on a uh, new DC license they were picking up and Harry Potter. And we just kind of fell into that and the rest is history. Now, besides working on those popular brands, you guys came together and started your own brand, Mythic Legion. So how, how did that start? Well, that's something we, we've wanted to, to create our own line of figures uh, ever since we've been in the industry. It's, you know, it's kind of an ultimate dream. And, um, you know, you mentioned Masters of the Universe. We grew up on Masters of the Universe, things like Dungeons and Dragons, um, that, that high fantasy, um, genre of storytelling and toys and um there really w hasn't been a um a long-running toy line in that genre uh there hasn't been since the 80s and uh so you know we basically wanted to come in and fill that void and uh you know Myth mythic legions had a lot of ideas that have been percolating for years and uh you know, we, we with the time that we put it together, the time was right, and uh, you know, we decided to give it a try. So you have the toy line at Mythic Legions, and now you're heading over to a video game. Why did you guys decide that that's the next step? I, I think a video game is just a natural progression for what we're doing. I mean, there are a couple of different outlets that we could could have gone down, which would be you know, uh, animation or movie or. TV show, something like that. But I think that the essence of, of what we do is fan involvement. So I think um, we have a great fan involvement. And I think of operating a video game like this allows those people to be immersed in the, in, the, in the game and right now in the creation of the game. So it's a perfect situation for us. All right, are, are you guys gamers? And you have any favorite games? Well, I was years ago before I got too busy with life that I couldn't play games a lot. So, I mean, one thing that uh, Eric used to get me um, the new Grand Theft Auto every year when it would come out for like a Christmas gift, even if it was like in the fall or whatever. And I would spend three or four days on vacation sitting in the living room in my underwear just playing Grand Theft Auto. So, yeah, that was a big one for me. I was a I was a big gamer for a long time. Most recently, maybe mobile games I play every once in a while, but I can't. I don't have enough time to play them as much as I would like anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good uh, I'm getting a crash course. Yeah. All right. All right, Jim. You know, you were talking about how how fans are involved now. Now, can you touch more on that? How they're going to be involved in this video game? Well, I mean, they're going to be involved in the process as far as you know, making some. Uh, you know, getting informed of what's going on and how it's going to be done. Uh, when the game is in play, they'll actually be able to select different pieces to, to create their own figures the same way they're able to do that 
uh, in a physical manner as we sell the figures as a physical piece. So it's kind of, you know, um, getting these figures and how having them uh, come to life in the video game. Yeah, so that was a big part, right? With with the action figures, they're able to customize it, and and same goes with the video game. Yeah, always. I mean, since we started, um, even at the very beginning of Mythic Legions, it was supposed to be a little three and three quarter inch line, and we had built it in a way that you were going to be able to pop pieces apart and like reassemble them in different configurations. And uh, when we went, decided to make them like the roughly six to seven inch scale instead, we wanted to keep that aspect in there. But we went even deeper and we have a, a figure now that can separate into roughly 40 or 50 parts. And you can mix and match these parts and swap them around between figures and make your own specific characters. And that was a, a big thing that we wanted to include in the video game when we started that. You know, we want a great game that kind of focuses on the world of Mythic Legion's mythos and the characters and being able to play as those characters and fight against those characters, but also to have that aspect that seems to have really grasped the fan community where you can customize your own character at the beginning of the game and make it really your character if you want. Now, I can only imagine just coming up with these action figures and, and even a video game. So how long have you guys been working on this video game? Well, it's been, for, for me, it's been a six month crash course. I don't never played video games before, so I've learned a ton about how they look and how they work. Uh, but we've been actually at this kind of thing for a long time, just, you know, but we didn't have the avenue to do it. And now, you know, we're approached by AI and it's, you know, it, we're ready to go now. And how, in, how involved are you guys uh, in uh, the development of the game? And are, are you working with the developmental team or how, do, how does that work? Uh, we're very involved. Uh, we meet at least once a week. Um, and, uh, you know, we have been uh, taking a look at every aspect of the game creation. Um, you know, sometimes maybe too nitpicky uh, with the things that we're, you know, making comments on. but. Um, you know, it, it's, we've been able to maintain, you know, really the, the flavor of the toy line and the, the essence of, of the story and the characters. And, um, you know, that, that's been a vital part of this, the collaboration on the game is just getting it right and making sure that it's authentic for the fans who love the toy line, that they're going to, you know, carry that love over to the game. Well, I'm, I'm sure just the feeling to see these characters come to life. Can you talk about that a little bit, how, how it was to see them for the first time? I mean, if, if you're um, an artist at all and you draw or you sculpt or whatever, in your mind, that's a living, breathing thing. And to see it come alive on screen in the form of a, a cartoon or a movie or this time a video game, it's like a dream come true. I mean, especially with a video game where you're not just watching things on the screen happen with your characters, but you're going to actually get to interact and feel like you're actually part of this world and feel like you're in there, that you're one of these characters themselves. So the first season of the game's story mode, it's titled, I'm, I'm going to try to pronounce this right, uh, War of the Ether Blade. Did I, Perfect. Did I yes. right? Perfect. Yeah? yeah. All right. Can you guys tell us about that? Uh, the, this game will essentially uh act as a uh, season one of telling the mythic legion story um and you're gonna you're gonna play this game as a character that you create and you're gonna follow the storyline uh along you know you're gonna follow alongside the storyline you're gonna meet the main characters and uh you witness crucial events in the story but uh, it's going to be really exciting because these are stories that we've alluded to in the bios that come with the figures and, you know, bits and pieces of story that we've, we've let out here and there. Um, but this is going to be the first spot where you really get to, again, like CB said, not only, uh, you know, not only see the story, but to be part of it as well and interact with it. So it's, it's very exciting. 
so, so this game is going to be available digitally as part of a physical collector's edition, but, but it seems like fans are also getting first access to new figure packs. So what else uh, will fans get access to? Um, so there, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up with this. Um, one of the, the images that was teased yesterday, and it, it's a, a, a natural transition uh, from the toy line into the, uh, the crowdfund for the, the game, is uh, we're doing a set of four uh, action figure builder packs. Um, and these are packs where uh, the, you have come with a base figure, multiple heads, armor, weapons, uh, things so that you're you you can recreate what you're doing in the game as in customizing your own character. And so we wanted to do a figure release that really uh, went alongside what the experience of playing the game and creating your character is going to be. Not only that, the, uh, the, the four figures that we're going to be doing um, to coincide with the release of this game have to do with the types of characters you're going to encounter in the game. Orcs and elves being a major part of uh, this chapter. So guys, before we go, are there any other fan tidbits that, that we need to know about? Yeah, one of the cool aspects of this is gonna be uh, during the crowdfunding portion, you'll be able to buy in at a level where if you, if you meet this level, your face will actually be included as one of the faces that people can choose from within the game. In other words, your face, you can go in there, you can use that face and play as yourself, or everybody else who joins in can play as you as well. So you'll be part of the whole world. All right, so we're really excited to see the development of the game at Mythic Legions coming out in 2022. Congratulations, the Four Horsemen, and we can't wait to see what comes next. Thank you, guys.